Having stomach cramps is no fun, and if your dog is stretching out all the time, if they seem to be uncomfortable in their tummy, then what could be going on? And just how can you go about getting to the bottom of it? Well, that's what I'm discussing today. And then my next question is from Barbara, who says that she has a small mixed breed terrier who's eight years old, and every now and then she has stomach or intestinal cramps. She'd come back from work, um, and the dog just wants to go out straight to the park, will start eating grass like crazy. Um, you know, then she's not vomiting or having any diarrhea, but she just keeps stretching her belly and she walks slowly. But then after half an hour, she's back to normal and she's eating her food usually. Now, in the past, she has had problems with Giardia and other parasites that, um, you know, that, that have been treated properly. But Barbara is worried that she might have something serious um, going on in her stomach or in her liver or in her intestines. And so the first thing to say is actually Barbara getting her dog checked over to make sure that there's no pain or other problem with her in her abdomen will definitely be a good idea. So if also, if it's possible as well, also film one of these episodes because so often, you know, when we're having dogs brought into our consulting room, they just don't do what you know, what, what they're, they're doing at home. They don't do the behavior. And so it's very difficult to get a picture of exactly what's going on without being able to see it. You know, it's very hard to describe these things sometimes. So, you know, just taking your, your phone out when she's having one of these episodes, recording it can be really important. And it can definitely make a decision, uh, make a difference when it comes to um, the speed at which a diagnosis can be made or which tests are run, um, you know, and it can, so, so it can help save time, but it can also save money so that you're not having um, tests that are actually um, unnecessary being run. So film something if you can. Um, now, if you do have your dog checked over and everything is normal, then there could be a number of different causes. And that could be something like a mild pancreatitis. So the pancreas um, is up kind of by the stomach or close to the stomach at the top, kind of the, the front end of the, the abdomen. Um, and also a kind of a mild pancreatitis. So we get pain in that front end of the abdomen, but we also often will get dogs stretching out. So the classic prayer position is what we call it. And it's where their, their bum is in the air, their back legs are kind of straight, and then they're crouching down so that their head and their chest are on the ground and their front legs are stretching forward. So that's um, you know really just a sign of, of abdominal pain, but it's something that we'll often get with, with a pancreatitis. Now, pancreatitis can vary from just being a mild, grumbling kind of chronic pancreatitis where that discomfort is pretty much the only thing that's going on. But you can get more severe, um, and ultimately life-threatening acute pancreatitis. But in that case, the dog would be, you know, very unwell. Now, there might also be something like inflammatory bowel disease or a dietary sensitivity where the lining of the intestine is just getting a little bit inflamed and so that's causing problems there. Um, or absolutely, it could even be something slowly growing in her abdomen. So that you know, we're thinking really of tumours here. Now, they're not always able to be felt when um, when a vet is feeling the, the belly. It depends on how, you know, tense the abdomen is, where the mass is, what size it is, um, all that kinds of things. Now, most likely there's nothing serious. Um, and that means that there are several options going forward, you know, really depending, of course, on what your vet suggests and what the examination findings are and, you know, any other history maybe for, for this wee terrier. So you could potentially try and switch to a hypoallergenic diet. So just a nice, bland, easily digestible diet that's designed for intestinal up upsets and, um, you know, potentially allergies or food um, dietary insensitivities, you know, and just see if that change of diet helps. Now, whenever we change diet, it can, well, sometimes we'll get a, 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 an improvement very quickly, but sometimes it can take a number of months before we see the full benefit of that diet. So, you know, you're gonna, if you're gonna change diet, then really continue to feed that for a few months before giving up if the attacks are continuing. Now, another strategy to take place and would be the safest option would be to run a screening blood test for some of the things that I've discussed. Certainly, um, you can get blood tests that would rule out or make pancreatitis very, very unlikely. Um, and then depending on those results, you can also have a screening ultrasound. So that would be useful to have a little look at the lining of the intestines to see if there's any inflammation there, which may be an indication that we're dealing with an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and also it's going to show you if there's anything growing. So if there is a mass in the liver or the spleen or the stomach or something like that. So that's something else to, to think about as well. Now, like I say, I suspect that there's nothing too serious behind what's being described, but there's no way that I can say that for sure. And also, it's clearly causing a problem to this wee terrier. It's causing some distress, it's causing some discomfort. And so getting a checked over and then discussing the options with your vet is definitely going to be the best idea. Because if there is actually something going on and there's a good treatment that we can be given, well, if we get onto it early, we're more likely to, 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 to get a, a diagnosis that is um, you know, actionable and that we can do something about. So sometimes with some conditions, if we leave things too late, then 
you know, even if we make that diagnosis, the treatment that we give will not have the best effect. Um, and also, if it's nothing, then we've got peace of mind, um, that there's nothing more that we need to be doing or nothing serious we need to be treating. And we can then maybe take some of these longer term management steps to try and reduce these periods of discomfort. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.